All right, welcome back everyone. So today's video is going to be a little different. Recently, I have been getting back into C coding for the first time in many, many years. Might do a whole video on C programming, but that might take a little while. So in the meantime, I thought it might be a fun exercise to try to write a C program that doesn't have any dependencies on any libraries. It seems like the kind of thing that you should be able to do in C. And I think it's an interesting way to learn a little bit about what happens under the hood when you compile and run a C program. So just a quick note before we get started, today we're gonna to be working on Linux. Uh, I spent a long time trying to get this working on a Mac. And I think Apple really doesn't want you doing this kind of thing, or at least they don't expect anybody to be trying to do this kind of thing. So I just couldn't get it working on a Mac. I'm not even sure if this is possible on Windows. Maybe it is, I don't know. But it's fairly straightforward on Linux. So if you want to do this kind of thing, I highly recommend doing it on Linux. Um, I'll also just say what we're about to do is uh, kind of silly and very not portable. And we'll probably make uh, serious C programmers kind of mad, but. That's okay, we're just messing around and having some fun today. So let's start with our canonical Hello World C program. Let's just have a quick review of the code in case your C is a little bit rusty like me. We have our main function as the entry point for our program. In that we call printf, that is the standard way to print some text in C. And then we return zero from our main function to indicate that the program exited normally. And of course up the top we have this line include studio.h, uh, that's the standard IO header file. And that indicates we want to include that file which contains printf function and, and a whole bunch of other stuff as well. And obviously this, uh, this include is what we want to get rid of. Okay, so let's just compile this and check it works. For reference, the C compiler on this system is uh, GCC version 13.3 whatever. You can see the exact version here if you really want to know. So it compiles and it runs. Uh, let's just take a quick look at our binary. Uh, first, let's just see how big it is. So it's about 16 kilobytes. Now let's see what runtime dependencies it has. We can use the LDD command to do this. .so is the extension for shared libraries on Linux. And here we can see that we have three shared libraries that our humble binary is currently depending on. And if we wanna see even more about how this works, we can even take a look at the assembly code for our program. We can send the capital S arg to the compiler and that tells it to stop after generating the assembly. And so we can take a look at what it looks like. Don't worry about all this, uh, what all this stuff does. Let's just take a look at this one line here. See how it says whole puts at PLT. PLT stands for the procedure linkage table. Uh, without getting into all the details, this is how the program calls out into uh, the shared library. By the way, notice it's calling puts and not printf like you probably expected. Don't worry about that. That's just a cute little optimization by the compiler. It's realized we're not actually doing any text formatting. We're just printing a simple string. So it's uh, decided that it can use the presumably slightly more efficient puts function to do that instead of calling printf. Okay, so let's get to work removing the dependencies. First, let's get rid of the runtime dependencies. This is easy enough. We just pass the static flag to the compiler. So let's just try that out. Okay, uh, program still runs. And let's see if there are any runtime dependencies. Okay, so LDD says not a dynamic executable. That's good, that's what we wanna see. It means we have no runtime uh, dependencies on any shared libraries. So we've gotten rid of our runtime dependencies. Now let's see how big the file is. Okay, it's now 767 kilobytes. So it's actually way bigger than it was before. That's because we're now actually including all of uh, studio.h in our binary. This probably seems like a bit of a step backwards, but we've, we've kind of simplified the problem, right? So we're kind of going in the right direction. Finally, you might be curious how the assembly for this program looks. And if we take a look, actually, it's actually exactly the same as the assembly without the static flag. That's because the static flag is actually passed through the linker. The compiler doesn't really care about it. It's the linker uh, that needs to know if we want to create a stack binary. Okay, so next, what we want to do is we want to get rid of our dependency on printf. So let's think about what printf, or puts for that matter, is really doing. So when we call it, uh, characters seem to get drawn on the screen. But does printf actually know how to render characters on the screen? Uh, no, it doesn't. That's the terminal's job. All printf really does is write characters to a stream uh, specifically the standard out stream. And if standard out happens to be connected to a terminal, well, now the terminal will go render some characters on the screen. And remember that in Unix, everything is a file. 
which is to say you can often treat streams as files, which is actually what is happening in this case, where printf is really just writing to a file descriptor and it just happens that that particular file descriptor is standard out. So how do we write to a file descriptor? Well, the way you do that is to make a system call. Our userland program isn't allowed to just, you know, muck around with the file system and whatnot uh, directly. Instead, we have to request the kernel to do that for us by making a system call. Specifically, we want to call the write system call. So how do we do that? Well, the usual way on a Unix-like system would be to call the write function in the uh, unistd.h library. That's the Unix standard header library. This is basically a library that has wrappers around all the system calls. Of course, it's still a library dependency, but we're getting a little bit closer. So let's just take a couple of baby steps and do this first. So to call write, uh, we need to send the file descriptor that we want to write to. And that happens to be this constant here. That's the, uh, the constant for standard out. Um, it just happens to be the number one, actually. And we give it the character array we want to write. And finally, uh, we give it the number of characters we want to write. Uh, we don't want to write the null terminator, so we just take the size of the character array and subtract one. Let's just compile this and give it a quick go. And OK, so it works. But we still have an import statement in our code. So we have to go a little bit deeper. If we really want to make the syscall directly ourselves, we're going to have to get our hands a little dirty and write some assembly. Don't panic, making the system call is actually quite simple. There is a dedicated instruction in the CPU to do it. We just need to set a few registers with our arguments and call the syscall instruction. This will hand over control to the kernel, which will decide what to do with our request. So this is what our code looks like. First, we set up the registers. In the RAX register, we put our syscall number. Each syscall has a unique number to identify it. And the number for write happens to be one. That is what this dollar sign one means. It just means the number one. So we're saying to the, uh, move the number one into register RAX. Next, we set the same arguments as in the previous example where we were calling write using the standard Unix header file. So we set the register RDI with the file descriptor for standard out. This happens to be the number one as well. Easy. Next, we need to load the memory address of our string into the register RSI. We do this using the LEA or load effective address instruction. The dollar sign zero means that we use the first operand for this inline assembly. We'll get back to how the operands work in a second. And finally, we load the number of characters we want to write into register RDX. In this case, that is the number 14. Cool. So now we're ready to call the syscall instruction. This bit here is where we put any outputs we want to capture. In this case, None. Next, we put our input operands. This is how we can uh, send uh, arguments, I guess, into the assembly code. So in this case, uh, we want the memory address of our string. Uh, this is the operand we used earlier when we were setting up the registers. And finally, we set the uh, so-called clobbers. This tells the compiler which registers we've been messing with. Uh, this is important because the compiler needs to know that it can't make any assumptions about the state of those registers, which it might otherwise do. And that's it. So let's compile it and see if it works. All right, nice. No complaints from the compiler and the program works. We don't have any import statements in our program. Uh, so I guess we're done, right? We solved the problem. Hooray. Uh, well, not so fast. Let's take a quick look at the size of our program. All right, so it's 767 kilobytes. That's not really, I think, what we'd be expecting, right? Something, something seems to have gone wrong here, right? So what's going on? Well, it turns out that even though we have no imports left in our code, the compiler is actually still uh, sneaking some standard library stuff into our binary. If we really want to build a binary without any dependencies at all, we need to send the no standard lib flag to the compiler to let it know, you know, we're really serious. Okay, so let's just do that, right? And okay, so we try to compile and we get a warning. Uh, this warning is actually coming from the linker and it says it can't find the symbol underscore start. Okay, that's interesting. So let's try writing it anyway. And it sort of works. It does print our hello world message, but instead of exiting gracefully, uh, the program just crashes with a segmentation fault. So something's gone wrong here, right? So what's going on? So it turns out usually when you compile a C program, uh, at least in this kind of scenario, uh, the compiler actually still includes some standard library code. Uh, probably does this for all sorts of reasons, but the ones we care about today is that it essentially kind of wraps the main function. Uh, so it turns out main is actually not the, the true entry point uh, to our program that the linker is expecting. It's really looking for underscore start. 
this uh, real entry point takes care of things like uh, getting the program arguments so they can be passed into our main function and things like that. Also, it turns out to properly terminate our process, uh, you actually need to call the exit system call. Usually the standard library code would take care of this. Uh, after our main process returns, um, it would call exit for us and probably do all kinds of other things like, I don't know, making sure all child processes are terminated or whatever. Uh, so if we want to make a graceful exit, from our program, we're going to have to make that system call ourselves. All right, so that first problem is easy enough to fix, at least in this case. Uh, we just rename our main function to underscore start, and that seems to make the linker happy. Well, the second problem, we just need to make the exit system call ourselves. Uh, this system call is even simpler than the last one we did. Uh, we just need to set the syscall number to 60. That's the system call number for exit. And we'll just set the actual exit code to zero to say we've terminated successfully. And that's it. All right, so let's try this one more time. Uh, first, we'll compile it. All right, no warning from the linker. And let's give it a go. And no more crash. The program successfully exit. So this time, I think we really are kind of done. Let's just do one more sanity check. Let's take a look at the size of our binary. And it's now nine kilobytes, which is smaller than our original dynamically linked binary. So I think that's a good sign. You might be thinking nine kilobytes, that still kind of seems like a lot. We can actually try disassembling the program using uh, the obstump command. Uh, let's take a quick look. And here you can see this is our actual uh, main function, but you can see there is a bunch of other sections. I'm not exactly sure exactly what all these do, but I think they're for things like security, debugging, error handling, things like that. Could probably try to get rid of some of those as well, but I think at this point you may as well just like ditch the C compiler and write the program yourself in assembly, which does sound like a lot of fun, but let's do that another day. So we achieved our goal. We don't have any more library dependencies. Obviously, we still have dependencies, you know, on the operating system and things like that. But, you know, that's a, that's a whole other thing. I should say there's not really a lot of good reasons to do this on a uh, like a so-called managed environment, like an operating system like this. You're much better off just sticking to the standard libraries. But I think it is a fun exercise. Um, I certainly learned a couple of things uh, doing this, and I hope you enjoyed it too. So I think that's enough for today. Um, I think my next few videos are also going to be on C programming. That's just kind of what I'm into right now. That's my vibe. But uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and make sure you don't miss the next video.